uh, next speaker, Marco Petty. Uh, well, he doesn't really need any introduction. I think everybody knows him, uh, certainly those in the, the society. Uh, but just briefly, you know, he spent quite a bit of time at the University of California, University of Chicago. Uh, but then he has moved to the uh, University of North Carolina in 2016. And he is now the professor of medicine and surgery and the co-director of the Center of Esophageal Diseases and Swallowing. Um, so he is going to give us a, um, a surgical uh, a treatment aspect of echelasia. Okay, Marco. Thank you very much. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be part of this uh, symposium and uh, I am impressed by the wonderful presentation of uh, Dr. Vani Konda. So let me give you my view about uh, the treatment of echelasia. So we always talk about Ernest Seller, uh, who clearly performed the first operation, even though it's not what we do today. <clears throat> but at least for me, there are two other people that are very important. For the United States is Carlos Pellegrini. Uh, he performed, uh, along with the team from UCSF in January 91, the first minimal invasive thoracoscopy in myotomy. And then there is no question whatsoever uh, that uh, Professor Inouye um, has uh, brought uh, an incredible innovation when he performed the first uh, peroral endoscopy in myotomy in uh, 2008. <clears throat> now, I have three disclosures. The first one is uh, often these debates place one expert against another, place one technique against another technique. In my mind, uh, it's not laparoscopic killer myotomy versus poem. I think it's laparoscopic killer myotomy and poem. They are both incredibly effective. So the issue for me is patient selection. When should we use a Heller myotomy? When should we use poem? The second disclosure is I'm no financial uh, disclosures. <clears throat> the third one might seem strange. Uh, this is a phrase that comes from a book of George Santayana in 1905. And he says that those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And as you will see, this applies incredibly well to the treatment of esophageal achalasia. So at least for me in the United States, the past started in January 1991. <clears throat> Up to the moment, we were doing a myotomy through a left thoracotomy. And uh, in uh, January 91, the group at UCSA, led by Carlos Pellegrini, performed the first thoracoscopy in myotomy. It was guided by endoscopy. We extended onto the gastric wall for five to 10 millimeters, and we did not perform an anti reflux operation. <clears throat> So in uh, 1992, uh, the American Surgical, we present the results of our first 17 patients. It was clear that the operation was feasible and the advantages of minimal invasive surgery. About 90% of patients did well. But there were some questions about the long-term results, but especially about the incidence of gastroesophageal reflux, because uh, as I just mentioned, we were not doing a full duplication. Now, we are at the beginning of the 90s, uh, and uh, the, our relationship in the United States with insurance companies was much simpler. So we were able to perform a 24-hour pH monitoring in all of our patients. And interestingly, 60% of them, after a thoracoscopy in myotomy, had pathologic reflux. Now, I say interesting because two-thirds of these patients were absolutely asymptomatic. So the only reason we discovered the pathologic reflux is because we test this patient with an objective test. So, <clears throat> It became clear that the goals of operation had to be different, not only the relief of dysphagia, but we had to do something to prevent reflux, because otherwise we were risking to exchange one disease, echalasia, for another gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we followed the example of many centers in Italy. Surgeons in Italy have been clearly leaders such as the group in Padova, Sandro Mattiol in Bologna, Riccardo Rosati in Milano. And we start uh, doing a laparoscopic killer myotomy, and we added an anterior partial 180 degree fundoplication or door fundoplication. So then we studied 
all the patients that we had already performed a thoracoscopy in myotomy, and the first 30 consecutive patients that they had the laparoscopy in myotomy with a door, when we test them by 24 hour pH monitoring, you can see that the difference was striking. Reflux was still 60% after thoracoscopy and myotomy, but only 10% when we did a laparoscopic operation with a partial fund application. Now, this study was published in 1998, was a retrospective study, <clears throat> but in 2004, the group of Bill Richards performed the first prospective randomized trial, comparing uh, 21 patients that had just a laparoscopic LR myotomy to 22 patients with a laparoscopic LR myotomy and the door fund application. As you can see, the difference in pathologic reflux was striking again, 48% without fund application, but only 9% when a fund application was added. And I think it's just fair to quote the results of the group from Padua in Italy. They recently present the experience with more than a thousand LR myotomies over 25 years. They were able to taste by 24 hour pH monitoring after the operation, 615 patients. And as you can see, only 9.1% of these patients had pathologic reflux. Well, we move now to 2008 and Dr. Inoui performed the first poem and he reported the first results in 2010. He operated with this new technique that he will describe 17 patients. The results were excellent. So let's look now on a poem and see how effective is this, this technique. <clears throat> in 2018, uh, we did a meta-analysis of the available studies after laparoscopic LR myotomy and POEM. And as you can see, there is no question that at least at a short-term follow-up, POEM is very effective, maybe even slightly more effective than a laparoscopic LR myotomy. Other studies were soon published. For instance, this was a study that looked at the effect of POEM particularly in patients with type 3 achalasia. And as you can see, even though the follow-up was very short after POEM, was about three times longer after a Heller myotomy, POEM did a great job, probably because it's possible to extend the myotomy more proximally. And then another study, again, short follow-up, three months, showed that if you have recurrent symptoms after a Heller myotomy, POEM is very effective, giving results that are actually similar to the one that you can obtain with a POEM uh, without any prior intervention. So what is the problem with POEM? I think that gastroesophageal reflux disease has been shown over and over to be the Achilles heel of POEM. And I will just like to show a few studies. This is the study from uh, Guido Costamagna, Catholic University in Roma. They attempted the uh, poem in 100 patients, they completed in 94. Excellent result, a one year follow up in 94.5% of patients. But uh, about a quarter had heartburn, 27% had esophagitis. And when they studied these patients by pH monitoring, 53% had pathologic reflux. And again, we confirmed this data in our meta-analysis of 2018. Reflux, uh, pathologic reflux was present in only 11% of patients uh, with the Heller myotomy plus fund application versus 48% after POEM. Now, finally, we have the results of the first prospective randomized trial comparing endoscopic and surgical myotomy in patients with idiopathic echolation. The follow-up was two years, 108 patients at POEM and 103 the laparoscopic LR myotomy. The results were similar with an ECHR score of less than three in about 80% of patients, which is actually lower than other studies. But when they look at esophagitis, this was present in about 20% of patients after a laparoscopic myotomy, but in almost 60%, so three times more after POEM. And this has been confirmed in another prospective randomized trial. 
This is the one published in JAM in 2018, comparing poem to pneumatic dilatation. A two-year follow-up, uh, esophagitis was present in 7% after pneumatic dilatation and 49% after poem. Now, let me open a parenthesis. What is striking in this study is that poem was very effective, no surprise. But the same gastroenterologist that years before had obtained a 90% success rate in the European trial using the same technique, now obtained only 54% at two year follow up in this study. Considering they were the same gastroenterology and the same technique, I really don't have an explanation for this striking difference. Now, what are the problems with reflux? I think the only study who has really addressed this is the one that was published in 2015. A two and a half years follow-up, the success rate went down to 78%. Let me stress that if you look at the authors, these are the experts. But reflux esophagitis was present in 37%. Three patients developed Barrett's esophagus, one patient a stricture, and now we know that there is a patient at John Hopkins that has been fine with cancer. And I will be very interested in knowing the data of Sandro Mattioli from Italy because he has probably the long, longest follow-up uh, after intervention for echalacia in the world. And then <clears throat> we have this series of Dr. Inouye, large series of 500 patients, um, interesting definition of uh, success, very strict. Uh, two months data uh, in 83% uh, of patients, reflux esophagitis 65%. And that three year, there are data in only 12% of patients. The success rate is still good, and reflux is 56. Dr. Inou was recently published in 2020 the result of a multi-center study uh, from Japan, one year follow-up, success rate in a one year is 97%, but again, 54% of patients a reflux esophagitis. So as you can see, and if you recall the phrase of George Santayana, it's true, those who don't remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So we've come a 360 degree circle. We started thoracoscopy in myotomy, we discontinued the technique because of the fear of reflux, strictures, virus, cancer, and now we are recreating the same situation. But I want to give you with a positive view of poem. I have to be honest and say that over time, I learned to appreciate this technique more and more. I feel that achalasia, as Dr. Conda underlined, needs to be treated in a multidisciplinary center. I think this technique is very effective. It's clearly the treatment of choice in patients with prior abdominal surgery. In the past, I approached them with a thoracoscope in myotomy. Today, I would send for POEM. It's probably the treatment of choice in elderly patients who don't want to have a laparoscopic operation. As I shown before, with the limitation of short follow-up, seems to be the treatment of choice for type 3 echalasia. And it's really good for treating symptoms that recur after a laparoscopic elder myotomy. Now, I feel that uh, this operation should be done by surgeons and not by gastroenterologists. I'm aware of three patients in the United States that died. They were treated in surgery center by gastroenterologists. They were sent home the same day. They came back with a leak, multi-organ failure, and died. A surgeon instead is able to treat the perforations and leaks either with a stent, endoscopic suturing, but taking the patient to the OR if it's needed. In addition, if patients develop reflux that is refractory to proton pump inhibitor, they can do a fund duplication. I feel that it's very important when we discuss uh, the different treatment options with patients to mention that 50 to 60% of patients after POEM will eventually develop reflux. This can cause strictures, which is the most common cause of recurrent symptoms when you have reflux but it's esophagus and cancer. Even though there are no strict guidelines, uh, my patients have an endoscopy every two or three years or whenever symptoms recur. 
But let me make a point. It's absolutely unethical in my mind to propose poem to children or young patients because you expose them to a lifelong of reflux. So over time, I changed my treatment algorithm for esophageal echolation. I think it's important to discuss with patients the laparoscopic myotomy poem. Uh, if there is experience, pneumatic dilatation should be part of the conversation. Many patients will do well with either technique. In case of recurrent symptoms, I believe the pneumatic dilatation should be tried first. But let me make a point about pneumatic dilatation. I've seen over and over patients sent to gastroenterologists and they use instead of a three centimeter balloon, 15, 18, 20. Well, that's a joke. I mean, it's good for the gastroenterologist because they will never have perforations, but it's not good for the patients. In case there is no relief after pneumatic dilatation, I think that poem is a better option than a redo elder myotomy. If the first poem or the first redo had been done on the anterior wall, you can use the posterior wall. And finally, if we use all these techniques, I think that overall, very few patients will need an esophagectomy. Again, I wanna thank you for being part of this seminar and I'm looking forward to the presentation of Dr. Inoui and Dr. Mattioli. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Marco. Excellent talk as usual. Uh, I like it when you say that it should be done by surgeons, <laughs> but I, I guess our urologist friends may not be that happy. But may I propose that it can be done by them, provided they have got good surgical support. <laughs> Yeah, I agree, but you know, in, in the center where I am, uh, I get call in the middle of the night. Oh, by the way, I did this morning a poem and the patient is leaking. I just want to let you know. Well, I, I, don't, I don't particularly appreciate that. And also the timing of intervention, it's always delayed. So honestly, I, and then there is the question, should you call a thoracic surgeon? Should you call somebody that is not a thoracic surgeon but knows how to do these myotomies? Just let the surgeons know. That's my, my philosophy. Right. I, I um, think for the interest of time, I think we should move on. I think you raised a very good point about reflux. Uh, I think uh, Inoue and also Sandro later on will be able to address these questions on reflux after poem and also surgery.